How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this week's Q&A. So like any other week, if you want a chance to one of your questions being answered, make sure you do drop a comment down below and I'll try to get to each and every question. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first question of the week. And it is, are the uh, 1.5 T's also blown head gaskets on the Civic Si? So the simple answer to that question is yes. Uh, we don't see as many of them come in through the shop as like, let's say an Accord. Uh, the Accord is by far the most uh, vehicle with that issue, blown ahead gaskets. And I think one of the differences is because typically somebody who buys a Civic Si is an enthusiast and will go ahead and, uh, you know, use 93 octane, 91 or better octane. And that greatly reduces the chances of having detonation going on inside of that engine so i think that's one of the main reasons yes people with a size typically will drive the car harder although um i think that is one of the reasons that they are not as blown as much as like an accord also there's just simply not as many civic size as there are accords uh, another thing is when these people modify their cars they know that nine out of ten times they have voided their warranty and at that point they're taking it to an independent shop and we're not seeing them at the dealer although if you go on the forums there's plenty of them with blown head gaskets and if we, if we place a head gasket upgrade to the arp head studs from a two-step performance i had that link to those head studs in the description section down below if you'd like to pick some up they apply to all 1.5 t engines so you can go ahead and use them and i do like using oem head gasket i don't like using any of the aftermarket alternatives out there so hopefully yeah, this is a question for you all right so the next question is how has the reliability of the j30 ac so that is the 3.0 turbo engine found in the MDX Type S and the TLX Type S in combination with the 10-speed uh, transmission uh, found in these vehicles. So uh, like anything else, there are some issues, although for the most part, they have been uh, fairly reliable. So as far as a 10-speed transmission goes, the trans itself seems to be pretty solid. Uh, there's been a couple of occasions here and there. And make sure you do follow along for my three-year review of my car um, it should be coming out somewhere in July. But anyways, in the meantime, so uh, the transmission itself, again, a couple of uh, issues here and there, uh, a couple of replacements needed. Although the bigger issue is that the transfer case where it splines into the transmission seems to be stripping at that connection there. And this is happening to modified and stock vehicles as well, both MDX Type S and TLX Type S. Seems to be more failures on a TLX because I think there's just more of them out there. So uh, we are seeing some of those at this time. I know of a handful of cases, maybe four or five of them uh, personally that I have been discussing with the owners of those vehicles. As far as the engines goes, they've been fairly reliable. We have not seen any issues with them. Um, I know of one that had a cracked front cylinder head on the TLX Type S. So um, that's just poor casting and it happens from time to time. Uh, but as far as the engine goes, I don't think anybody has done anything to destroy any of these yet. And from fact, they have been uh, pretty reliable. Now the VCM on them, so these are quad VCM, is a concern for me long term. But again, these engines are fairly new. They're only about three years old up to this point. So we will see how they hold up in the long run as far as the j35 y8 found in the 2023 and newer pilots we have seen some leaks from some of these vcm components but not the actual gears themselves so again time will tell kind of new to the to the scene here and uh, there's not that many of them like for instance let's say a 1.5 t or the older j35 j37 j30s etc there were just so many more of those so obviously we will see some more issues on those versus these that there's really a small sample size but uh you know fast forward a couple years from now there may be some new issues i definitely see them having some oil leaks um just like your older j series there's some similarities there probably have some oil pump leaks probably have some rear main seal leaks but again it's a little bit early to tell but fast forward three four five years from now we will have some more you know long term uh you know picture here so uh, i will update you guys as needed as far as that goes and once again make sure you do stay tuned for my three-year review coming around july or so all right what are some precautions that you want to take when working on your vehicle or that your mechanic should be taking so obviously you want to protect the uh the floor mats the the seats so we try to use a plastic if you're working on your own car when you get in it it's great 
you're doing some something uh you know you're cleaning up an oil leak fixing a leak and you're going to check it then chances are you're going to be greasy or dirty so make sure you protect your interior at all costs it's a lot easier to clean oil off the paint versus off your leather or suede or alcantara seats or whatever the case may be so just something uh to be uh you know mindful of as far as the exterior goes when you're working on it try to have a fender cover not always ideal so i try to have it when working on you know obviously uh, meticulous people regardless i should be doing that sometimes i'll use like a, uh, a mat of some sort just to cover where the air hose is going to go so we don't scratch up the fender if you're removing any sort of bumper or anything that's going to have some chafing possibly then you're going to want to use masking tape mask up anywhere where two panels or a grill might rub uh, you know anything in that situation and like that um, you avoid having some uh, paint damage or you know having yourself having a headache uh, for that um, also I like to test drive the vehicles before and after this ensures that a I cover all my bases and B I haven't caused any new issues when you know uh, working on a vehicle and you want to also clean after yourself right you don't want to leave the engine bay dirty the transmission dirty uh, the wheels dirty, whatever the case may be obviously brake dust is going to be on there but if you did an axle and just grease all over just make sure you clean that as best as possible so hopefully that answers the question for you warm clamps versus the honda clamps so the honda clamps are adjustable and they do adjust as the uh, hoses expand and uh, they go back to uh, whatever temperature they were at before so um i like to use those clamps the warm clamps is a one time and those are the ones you screw in um and those kind of have a one uh, tightness and that's it they sit there now as these hoses expand and contract uh, that could cause some leaks also when removing any type of hose clamp and again try to use the honda clamps that's the ones that you have to use the pliers and they're really hard to come off um, and then put on and they spring loaded um, again those do expand and contrast uh, contract to uh, the temperature as needed try to put those exactly where you took them all before especially if you're working on an older vehicle now that hose is already formed to the position of that clamp so if you put that clamp in a different position now you're going to have to have a void in a couple of those spots and you're going to create a leak that you didn't have before and you're going to probably assume that now you need a new hose and whatnot and all you needed to do was just put that clamp exactly where you needed to put it so um try to use the oem clamps they are phenomenal yes i get it they suck to take off and put on although they are so much more better than your typical warm clamps or anything else out there now in an emergency obviously use whatever you need to do to get yourself to uh, where you need to be but when you get to that place try to go back to uh, the oem clamp as possible they also rust so if you have an older vehicle and you're doing some hoses get new clamps and you'll be good to go until you need to do hoses once again probably in like 10 years so hopefully answers the question for you all right last but not least question of the week uh what do you do if you have your e-brake stuck on and your battery is dead or something happened to where you can't get it off at that point you're going to have to get your car towed there's no emergency release for the e-brake so that's the ones you have a button either on a center console or on a dashboard not your typical foot brake or your pull pull down lever um so if that happens to you you're probably gonna have to get a towed um if you if they come on a flatbed they're gonna drag it on and then probably have to put it on dollies to uh take it off the bed if they come with a wheel lift where they lift up the wheels uh hopefully they can lift up the back and not cause any damage to the front hope you can take it out of park uh but you may need a, a wheel lift and a dolly at that point too it's unfortunate but it is what it is from time to time we do see them getting stuck on it's typically somebody not using a proper scan tool to put the car into maintenance mode and trying to power probe something they end up frying the abs module or whatnot causing a whole bunch of issues and a whole deal of expenses that shouldn't be needed to get done but unfortunately things like this happen and people make mistakes so if you do get your e-brake stuck on and uh, you have one of these electronic parking brakes then chances are you're going to have a ton of headaches and getting that car out of that place is probably the least of them so that being said hopefully that answers the question for you and i'll catch everyone on the next one